we have a request for a major modification for central landing planned unit development. The commission probably doesn't get a lot of these. These are typically handled by the, uh, by the director. Uh, however, this was a rather large request compared to the, the type of uh, consideration that the director typically handles in house. Um, the location of this request is the so uh, southeast of Bruce Street and 6th Street. This is a, the site area is a full PUD. It's approximately 158 acres. The current zoning is a planned unit development, and the adjacent zoning is to the north, an R2 low density residential, R2A, two family residential, A1 agricultural, C3, commercial highway service and open display. To the east, there's an I3 intensive industrial. To the west, C3, I3, R2, and to the south, I3 and R1. So they've pretty much covered the alphabet. Um, there's also R2 and C3 to the south. The existing structures at this location, there's a, there are some existing apartment uh, complexes for Fountain Blue. It's a six-story multi, uh, multi, it says multi-building. A six-story multi-building apartment complex exists within the full boundary of the PUD. Uh, this is uh, listed as a special study area within the comprehensive plan. The projective traffic impact within the development boundaries, there are a variety of potential uses which make traffic generation estimates inaccurate until the property develops. Such uses are anticipated to have a high impact on traffic. However, these impacts were anticipated by the City of Conway with improvements along Central Landing Boulevard, 6th Street, and Bruce Street. Current traffic counts, 11,080T for 6th Street at Bruce Street, 47. 100 ADT at Bruce Street at Ingram Street. Utilities are available on this site, but development on the site will likely require additional improvements. The Master Street Plan says that 6th Street is a major arterial 100-foot right-of-way. Bruce Street, minor arterial 80-foot right-of-way. 9th Avenue is a collector with a 60-foot right-of-way. Equity Avenue, extension, minor arterial 80-foot right-of-way, and Jeanette Drive extension, minor arterial 80-foot right-of-way. Street improvement, extension, and construction of several streets are planned at the development site. Project description includes that the Central Landing PUD was originally planned to serve as a major retail center featuring a lifestyle center, hotels, apartments, general commercial uses, and office. There has been an increased interest and expansion in multifamily units in this area, which would be in the vicinity of the aquatic center once constructed. Requested changes to the PUD include to remove the single family components and increase the multifamily components while limiting the overall acreage of the PUD that may be used for multifamily to 60 acres. Leaving the remainder of the development for other uses as permitted by the final development plan. Amended, uh, amend the locations of multifamily uses through the PUD to align with developed Portions, transfers, own, transfers of ownership, and anticipated development patterns that have changed during the life cycle of the overall common plan of development. Staff comments, the proposal would remove single family uses and expand the multifamily uses while adjusting the location and expanding allowed areas of multifamily and institutional uses. The total multifamily units allowed would expand from 700 to 1440, which would be similar in density to an MF3 zoning district while allowing mixed uses where allowed. Units already constructed within the PUD shall count towards the 1440 total units. Staff recommends approval of the PUD application, uh, PU, PUD, that should say modification, uh, with the following conditions. The following conditions of approval are recommended for this development. One, the, I'm going to go ahead and read these since this is such an extensive. Uh, one, the following shall be further amended from the original conditions of the PUD or previously approved amendments thereof. A, amendments shall be reflected on the amended overall master plan in Exhibit C of the approval. B, single family residential shall be removed as an allowed use. C, total multifamily units within the full PUD as seen in Exhibit A of the approval shall change from 700 units to 1,440 units. D, all development shall meet all applicable development standards and site development review as defined in the City of Conway Zoning Code at the time of development. E, alterations of locations of institutional and multifamily uses throughout the PUD as identified in, on Exhibit C of the approval are approved. And F, 
Any additional major modifications to the PUD shall require the approval from the Planning Commission. Thank you, Chris. Any questions for Chris? Is the applicant here to speak in favor of this request? Name and address for the record, please. Corey Parks, 900 Oak Street. Uh, Chris, I don't think it's fair to say that this is a major modification because last year was a true major modification. Uh, but just based on that previous experience, I want to address a few things. One, um, the, the need for diversity in housing is unquestionable, uh, especially as we explore um, because for me, I get the privilege of working on behalf of our city to attract people um, and the folks that are going to employ them here. But through COVID and even before COVID, quality of place and people choosing where they live before choosing where they work has only increased. And so with that, we need to have available housing. Uh, unfortunately for folks, majority of folks, uh, the rising cost of real estate uh, makes it difficult to own property. Uh, and so, and there's some people that that's not a preference of them. They purely want to rent because it allows them the flexibility that they would not have otherwise. Um, because some would say that if you're not going to own a house for two years, then you shouldn't own a house. Um, give you a person example. Uh, I bought a house that was traditionally considered a first time uh, homeowner's house in 2016 for 150000 that same house is now 220000 if you were to buy it. So that makes it difficult for people to purchase property. Um, so our goal with modifying this, um, and actually I think it makes it more restrictive than what we did before, um, some of it will be controlled by economics. Because, for instance, if you look uh, on the frontage of 6th Street, uh, previously you could do multifamily there. Um, so what we did with this process, because with your predecessor, I tried to do this to think about every version of what could or would happen at Central Landing. Um, however, one little hiccup that we missed um, was that the proposed allowable meant the maximum allowable number of units. Uh, and so, for instance, there is a multifamily project that is under, con under consideration or in the process of trying to be approved that with the existing units of 339, and a potential of 600 units, it would push it to 999, which would be 299 over the allowable amount, which based on my conversations with the uh, city planning department, that would trigger us to do a major modification. So um, our goal with this is to increase density in an area where it makes sense because it's at the core. Um, it's going to be near the aquatic center, it's going to be along the path of um, the raised grant route that the city was awarded. Uh, and so knowing that property is limited and there's a need for a diversity in housing, um, we think that modifying this to allow for up to 1,400 units, and um, I'm going to potentially answer a question because I know Mark and I have had some conversations about utilities potentially. Um, some of this, like, that our methodology for determining the number of units was based on the maximum amount of acreage that we would use potentially for multifamily, but there may be some constraints, for instance, what's allowed from a, a utility standpoint. And so we may not get to that point, but what we wanted to try to do was avoid going through the process of doing this, knowing that that is the maximum amount that we would have. Um, to date, what I would expect is 999. But if in the event that we have multi-story buildings, we want to allow for mixed use development. Um, and so originally it was tied to acreage and that was kind of the thought process. But then after looking at it and knowing that there might be a three story building that has commercial or retail on the bottom with residential on the second or third floor, maybe just on the third floor, we would be restrained from that based on an acreage standpoint. So we base it on units. Uh, and so happy to answer any questions. Um, but I think as a, a, a growing city, um, a young city, uh, it is much needed for us to have a variety of housing. Um, and so the type of units that we'll have here, because I don't know that that's been addressed in this um, and, and what we've shared previously, it's one and two bedroom units um, in a range of, I think, 950, and I'm going to pull my notes so that way I don't misquote, 950 to 1125. Um, and so that's going to be 
On average for our rents in Conway, I think that's about $80 more. Um, and so it's going to be at market or slightly above market rate housing. Um, the quality of them will be in line with, I would say probably what exists within the market is somewhere between Centerstone and Fountain Blue. Um, and talking with the developer um, that initiated the need for us to, to change the number of units, um, they want to have something that is high quality, that they are going to ensure that people who are living there are going to be folks that want to abide by their rules. They have very restrictive uh, policies. For instance, um, we had a conversation about smoking. Um, if a resident is caught smoking in a unit, then they, there's no tolerance. They are immediately um, kicked out. Um, and so they want to ensure that the integrity of this property is protected long term. And as I mentioned earlier in talking about the Aquatic Center, um, we're going, the, the organization I work for is, owns the majority of the adjacent property. And so we have a interest in ensuring that it is done in a meaningful way, um, even if our organization um, wasn't focused on, on trying to grow the community. Um, it, it's still, from a financial standpoint, it impacts us, but then also from the mission of our organization. So long-winded explanation, but happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Corey? Y'all are good with the staff recommendations? Yes, we've gone through thorough. <laughs> They're probably ready for this to be approved or denied, so that way they can no Madam, longer have to see me on this specific project again. <laughs> Madam Chair. So I, I got a question. I think it's a fair question. Come on. <laughs> uh, we've seen a couple modifications of this PUD, which I think is understandable. But yeah. do you see any more? Uh, so <laughs> the staff would what tell the you that, very loaded. The okay. staff would tell you that I said in our last meeting, the same way that I said to James, I would not. I, my goal was to not be before them. But when you have acreage as much as we do, um, I think that it it would. I would potentially be a liar if I said there's no chance, but our goal with the modifications, because for the most part, and I'm not a planner and I'm not in city government, but I would say the changes truly are minimal because it's, it's overall, the only thing that really changed from our perspective is the number of units. Um, but that it had, we foreseen that being a potential issue, we would have changed it then and we wouldn't be before y'all now. Um, and so my goal is for not to have us be in this position again. I think that we've looked very strategically about what the potential uses would be. Um, but really the number of how it, because of the size of the acreage really is in the number of units is what triggered the major modification from my opinion. Is that fair, Chris? <laughs> The main thing that triggered the major modification was the change in the units from 700 to 1440. Because yeah. otherwise, everything else, I don't think we added anything. We actually changed. So, like, there were multifamily allowed along. Uh, this is page 51 uh, in y'all's packet. So, if you look at the side by side, like, multifamily was allowed on the frontage uh, and single family. Other than that, it's fairly true to actually, there's one addition. We added multifamily in the square where there's a uh, lighted industrial that starts on the first one. But other than that, it's in line with what it was before. Um, and so I would say it's a, major, a minor change, but. We'll just agree to disagree. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Not to beat a dead horse. Madam Chair, I did have one thing to add. To Go ahead, Chris. Um, on requested changes, the first bullet point states uh, remove or remove the single family components and increase the multifamily components while limiting the overall acreage of the PUD that would be used for multifamily to 60 acres. Oh, um, I would point out that this is actually a this is a Scribner's error in the staff report. We actually should have omitted from the word while on while limiting the overall acreage of the PUD that may be used for multifamily to 60 acres. Uh, the that portion of it was an early consideration mm -hmm. during our discussions however we opted to do, to uh, allow the uh, incorporation of the 1440 unit uh, 1440 units over the uh, area as needed okay, chris any other questions Did i go to the batter's box probably yes okay. can i get you to yeah, stop that timer because it's about to ding for us um is anyone here to, else to speak in favor of this request? 
see no one, anyone to speak in opposition. Come on, sir. I'm Junior Parker. Um, I'm at 205 Second Street that they're closed. Um, Saturday, I spent nine and a half hours talking to at least more than 50 people in the neighborhood. Everyone is opposed to the 1,440 apartments going on 60 acres. It's, um, it borders on the criteria of being inhumane, and it will eventually become a ghetto that discourages people from frequenting uh, the aquatic center. Now, is there anybody here that wants to raise a family in 60 acres that has 1,400? Is there anybody sitting here that wants to raise a family? This is about a family dwelling. All right. I don't think there is. All right, now people aren't going to move there because they want to. They'll move there. No, no one in Arkansas is going to want to live under that circumstance. Um, the only people who would move there are people who have been evicted from a suitable living dwelling, uh, people who are in economic distress. They, people would only live there because they had to, not because they wanted to. We're not creating something that people are going to want to go to. Um, all right, and this would be very unfair to the poor and the average citizen in Conway alike. Both, because what what happens? All right, over on the other side of Sixth Street, we have an equivalent to R two A to R two in the area. We have economic diversity there. All right, so if one person uh, hits a bump in the road, they've got a assistance somewhere in that neighborhood. They can help each other out. Now you create something where you're 60 acres, and 60 acres is the main thing. You create 60 acres where you have a bunch of people that had rather not be there. They're only living there because they have to. They're not living there because they want to, and they're in economic distress. They will not be afforded the neighborly hospitality if they hit that bump in the road. So what this would do, it would create a situation where it would keep the poor poor. Well, all right, now the reason we got the successful job where we're at is because there was someone else that had a successful job and we had a network contact going to that successful person. All right, now these people, they are going to have less of an opportunity to network to someone there that has a successful job. So it, what it is, it, it makes it harder for them to work themselves out of a situation like this because we're grouping them in too big of an area that is going to be low income. And then we got millions of dollars there that the average Conway citizen isn't going to want. And, and eventually it will be known as Conway's uh, ghetto. Um, now, I do have a proposal. I don't have one wrote up, but I'm just thinking off my head. Since most of them over there are R2, the R2A, uh, just my perception. And I mean, y'all know more about this than I do. All right. Take. 40 of the 60 acres and have it be either the R2 or R2A, and then take 20 of the acres and let it be MF1, which would be 220 apartments. I made a mistake and done my math it wrong last night when I emailed y'all this at four o'clock this morning. Um, but, uh, but what we could do, we could have the um, MF1 be a transition from the, uh, from the um, commercial, the industrial area, over to the RA, or R2, or R2A. The, the MF1 could be a transition there. And I think that is something, what it would do, it would create a competition, a healthy competition, not an unhealthy. The, the MF3 would create an unhealthy competition. But if we had it zoned as as what I've just called out, it would create a healthy competition between the people renting in the existing neighborhood and the neighborhoods to be built in accordance to those R R2s, R2As. Thank you. Any questions? We certainly appreciate the time that you've spent being an engaged citizen on this, so we appreciate your comments on this this evening. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition of this this evening? I think you're good, sir. All right. I will 
Oh, are you here to speak in opposition, sir? Come on down. I don't. I don't have that one laid out in my template. Oh, well, I can't see over it. I'm not tall enough. So go ahead with your question. My name's Kim. Oh, Mathis. yeah, name and yeah, address. Uh, living Conway resident, living at 1050 Madison Road. The roads coming out of this is this. Is it, that's going to stay the same. Are we? Are we? Because originally, when this shindig started years ago, this was the one question I didn't want to have to address. I mean, you know, the road. Are we not? It used to be when we started this, we was going to take one road through the industrial park and get have another way to get out of this area. But if we're just going to keep the same roads and we're taking Bruce Street and we're running Bruce into a dead end, pretty much because it turns from a four lane into a or a boulevard into a you know bottleneck uh, if you go straight across the railroad tracks, you know. And there's nowhere to go anyway because you go over to UCA, and when you get to UCA, what are you going to do? You can't go through UCA. So I don't know why we did that to begin with. But, you know. but anyway, that's not here or there. I guess my question is, is there going to be some more ingress, egress out of this area that is wide enough to handle, what is it, 1,440 <laughs> apartments? So that means there's going to be 2,800 cars. There's two cars per apartment normally, so. Go ahead. Thank you. Should I address the order? <laughs> so. I, I, he said, go ahead. So, okay. So, so I would address the, the uh, second one just because that's a little bit easier, even yeah. though it's not. Um, so we have had ample conversations around with both planning and with uh, the Department of Transportation to understand what the roads look like out there. Um, there's currently a route that's designed in the master street plan. Um, however, as we have looked at the different moving pieces, um, there is going to be an alignment with the requirements of the transportation department, which in, in included in that is uh, fire department and also planning. And so to your question, I would say uh, it will likely not be as it was proposed but all the potential uses will be considered to ensure that the transportation infrastructure is adequate to support all of the projects and proposed projects out there. Um, because I would say that we're fortunate in some ways that the, the roads have not already been fully built out because that gives us more flexibility um, because we've had to have some conversations with Conway Court previously about the infrastructure that's in the ground about potentially moving and what we can do to, to park on or potentially relocate in the expenses related to that. So I would say as proposed, it will be modified because every version that I've gotten excited about has been modified. But the streets will address the street. the st what is required by the proposed uses. Uh, as to the uh, previous comments, I would, I would say that um, we have, and I didn't mention this, but we have a property owners association that has restrictions that are actually more restrictive than the city's requirements um, to the point that we had two property closings that were impacted and delayed because of that. Um, and so, again, we have a first and foremost, we have a mission that we're focused on and are mindful of ensuring that this development is high quality but equitable and serves our community to the point that we are um, continue to be a place of choice for folks and hopefully continue to in improve on that. Um, but I don't foresee this becoming a less desirable location. I actually see it being the opposite. Um, and so I, I don't want to argue that fact, but just to say that this area will be protected through a property owners association in addition to the city's requirements in addition to the uh, property owners that, that have already purchased property or in the process of purchasing, pro purchasing property. Thank you, Corey. So we have done those to speak in affirmative and opposition. We've had questions. I'll just stick with that. Are there any other questions that have not been addressed tonight from the floor? With that, I will bring it back into commission for discussion. Commissioners, discuss. Yeah, I got a question for staff. Um, so is this more dense than MF3? It, it says similar density. It doesn't say consistent with. So, so 1,440 just... units over over uh, 60 acres is the equivalent of MF3 density. Okay. 
That's uh, 24 units per acre. That's one of the reasons why we also took off the 60 acre limitation because if it needs to spread out a little bit more then there's a, I think that there was a few acres of wiggle room so it, it could spread out just a little bit so it would be a slightly less mostly in, uh, in some of those areas. So, and I, I think that we also were looking at um, mixed use possibilities uh, in the future. So uh, we wanted to take those strict limitations off Whenever we're talking about that 60 acres. Jensen, did you have a comment? Uh, yeah. Sorry about my mic. <laughs> uh, I'll just go ahead and say uh, I like it. You know, Conway's growing pretty rapidly. and second biggest city in central Arkansas from that latest poll. And uh, I think these units being that close to the commons, that close to industrial park, that close to downtown, it really just opens up all the different jobs that could be that these people could have. So um, I like it. Um, I think it would give us better understanding for the apartment complex that's already there. If we knew how many units was in that to just give us an idea of the increased units and how it would kind of look. If you, do you understand what I'm saying there? I do. Um, so one of the questions that I had asked and uh, the applicant may be able to give more specific numbers was how many units were in the original Fountain Blue because it does an impact how many remaining units would be? I believe it was approximately 500, but the chair would have to recognize the applicant for further consideration. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Two things. Uh, I would like to clarify something that I didn't in my, my previous comments. Uh, the 60 acres, over. what? The 60 acres is not necessarily concentrated in, in one specific area. It's part of the overall development. Um, and I, I know that we had talked about that um, in their previous conversations, but I don't know that it was brought up here. Um, as far as the number of units, it's 339 that are under construction or completed. Um, and so the 1440 would be less than 339. Okay. The, the, he was called back up to answer a question from the commission. If there's a question for you, I, I promise I will call on you. I promise. Did that get your question, Adam? Yeah, but now I'm curious if you got another question. That's all right. So all this area that we see up there, which this is the new plan that would allow multifamily, is that where does that stand against 60 acres? How so much land is that? The MF developed as approved slash for poor MF is 18.1 acres. The yellow shaded MF CO3 is 20.07. And then there is to the south of that, there is an additional 10.5 um, that is just north of the, so between the cemetery and the MFCO3 yellow shaded area. So 30.57 is assuming that this is approved and the prospective buyer gets approval. That's already at 30.57. The other acreage will likely be spread throughout the development as it makes sense to serve the adjacent uses. For example, what I answered or what I provided earlier about the potential for us having a mixed use development that has a combination of residential, retail, commercial, et cetera. Does that answer it? Any other discussion within the commission? I'm ready to make a motion whenever you'd like. Go ahead, sir. I would like to motion that we uh, approve. Second. I have a motion from Drew, a second from Jensen to accept the recommendation from staff. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Let the record show the motion passes unanimously.